Hi everybody and welcome to this live talk show today on the topic of how to design visual contracts. As you know, at Legal Creatives, we're all about thinking creatively about the law. And today I want to show you with my special guest what can be done when we think more visually about the way we design contracts. So it's about moving away from text and starting to get closer towards the design and the visuals. So if you're interested, make sure to stay here as my guest is about to be on the show with me and also to tell your colleagues and your friends to join the live or to watch the replay. Uh, this is all about educating you and the wider audience about the potential of legal design, this beautiful and powerful innovation methodology. And so I wanna encourage you to stay for the live, to tell your friends and to also engage with your guest. You guest today has gone through a challenge at Legal Creatives that was all about creating visuals for legal documents. And today he's gonna share with you the outcomes of what he got to produce. So you're gonna get to see a little bit the work that happens behind the scenes, the things that nobody wants to show or tell, but today you're gonna actually get to see a little bit and get to hear his story so you can see the power of this methodology. My guest works in-house, he's based in the UK, he's uh, in-house counsel and legal technologist. His name is Marco Mandola, and he's going to be on the show with you to talk a little bit about his experience designing a contracts, moving away from the text, and moving closer to visuals. Let's go. Hi, Marco. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here today. Hi, Tessa. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, so much for making the time today, for accepting to share a little bit about your story through legal design and innovation. I'm very excited to hear more about your story. To get started, maybe you would like to present yourself. I made a very brief presentation. Maybe you'd like to say a little bit more about who you are and what you do, Marco? Sure, definitely. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, I'm a legal advisor in-house. Uh, my expertise is mostly company law, uh, data protection, and uh, digital technologies. Um, I'm also a self-starter uh, legal technologist. Um, I've created uh, on my own uh, a project with uh, legal tech. It's something that it's improving and uh, ramping up a lot, especially for um, in-house. Um, and I'm also very passionate about uh, digital rights and fundamental rights online. Uh, that's pretty much my professional profile. Yeah, and I think you've written a couple of great articles on the topics of privacy and, uh, you know, all these futuristic technologies. So I definitely encourage the audience to connect with Marco if you're interested and want to read his articles, because I really thought that was really insightful. Um, Marco, well, how did you... Person. Oh, you welcome. It's it's been great. It's been very inspiring. How how did you get to learn about this methodology for legal design? You want to share a little bit how you got to discover it and uh... sure, sure. Um, well, um, it was I have, to, I have to be honest. It was by accident. I was reading an article. Uh, I think it was uh, yeah, it was uh, I have to say it was half an year ago or pretty much. Um, and then, thanks to LinkedIn uh, and different connections, um, I approached legal creatives. And then I found you, and then, you know, I started to ask a few questions. Uh, I got involved with some of the team members of the Legal Creatives Academy, and I felt it was a good place uh, and a safe place to test yourself out of the zone, you know, out of your comfort zone, and to try new things. Um, and then, once I joined the academy, I've actually realized that uh, in my own days, uh, in my own studies and uh, professional activities, I was somehow applying legal design principles. Uh, so that was amazing to discover. Um, and so I've started that journey uh, at the end of 2021. And now I'm absolutely thrilled by 
uh, what I'm learning and how I'm improving and the power of this community to share and ask for help when you're looking for uh, feedback or you know support. This is so great. And we're so happy to have you as part of the Lego Creatives community. We have a lot of Lego Creatives watching. Joseph, Cecilia, Mariam San, welcome. Nice to see you. We have a LinkedIn user. I'm going to have to check on LinkedIn. Who is this secret, secret user watching? <laughs> but we are so excited you're here with us. And, uh, and uh, make sure to also engage with Marco and ask you questions as we uh, go through this presentation about how to design contracts differently using visuals. Um, before we even uh, dive a little bit more into this really interesting topic, I'd like to ask you, uh, Marco, when you got to discover this methodology, um, was it something that came naturally to you? Or did you have to encounter some challenges in the beginning of learning this methodology? Uh, what kind of challenges? Uh, or, or, or maybe on the other side, uh, what did you like the most about it? Hi, we have Arpin sure. as well. Nice to see you, Arpin. Let me, if I can, um, let me please show you a picture. Um, it's nothing. Let me see when you see my screen. Yeah, I, 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 I could, oh, can I share it? Okay. Let's, let's, yeah, let's make it up. Okay. So this is one of my books. Uh, I mean, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Everyone underlines the books and write, and everyone does his notes. And so there's nothing special in this. But I realized that if you check all my books when I was studying or still now for my professional activities, they are completely uh, <laughs> reverse engineered. Uh, colors are essential. I need uh, supporting somehow codes or arrows or structure to, to find the exact sections and to somehow enhance some content over the others. So again, as I said, uh, nothing special with it until then I discovered and then I can change. I can change a uh, picture because this is actually a bit. It's actually fun. Um, I mean, this is great. Who else is doing this? I, I remember I've done this so many times, right? Trying to hear trying to make sense of what's so, in the book, right? So this is literally reversing engineer a book. Uh, so what you have seen, what you see here is somehow my uh, very prehistoric version of visual design for my own books and understanding. So let's say that um, I, to respond to your question, somehow from like, naturally, I was already I really liked the approach vision so I was already into it a bit naturally let's say but then I've I've act when I, I was reading the article and I when I joined the academy I've actually realized there's so much structure you need to learn and to, you need to understand to deliver properly the design so I think as a typical learning curve I had an amazing improvement probably in a month and then I, I felt a bit stuck for the weeks because um, the real the real point was questioning myself and challenging the old way of understanding law uh, so going from black and white linear into visuals importance of colors importance of empathy importance of understanding importance of improving communication uh, to scrap as much as possible legalese or uh, otherwise called, uh, uh, let's put in different words, using 1000 words to say something you can say in three. Um, and so all these, uh, uh, all these elements of the legal design methodology um, have been great for me uh, to, to boost my comprehension. And then after a few weeks uh, doing the challenge, and again, as I said, I was a bit stuck with some with some passages, I've been able then to understand one main important lesson with legal design. Uh, go and have fun first. <laughs> Second, allow, your, allow yourself to make mistakes because you won't come out perfect. 
And then you start from something and you build up your knowledge step by step, uh, asking for feedback, which is the most important, uh, I have to say, the most important characteristic of legal design. So I'm loving it so far and I, I look forward to develop my skills with the academy and with the professionals to reach um, good uh, professional levels with it. Yeah, this is so true what you have said, and I, I'm very, very thankful you mentioned this, you know, allowing ourselves to do mistakes. This comes from the fact that there's a lot of experimentation that needs to be made in this uh, process of doing innovation, or uh, looking at things from a different angle, uh, trying different things. And within this uh, experimentation, well, there are times where we may be lucky and really strike, you know, uh, the first time, but usually it's a trial and error kind of process, even even when uh, when when professionals get more experienced, it's part of the methodology to experiment and to try things differently because it's all about finding the new, seeking the new. So I'm really thankful, Marco, you mentioned this because it is so difficult in the legal sector, especially to allow ourselves to experiment. But if we want to innovate, if we want to bring more value to our customers, we need to dare and be bold and, and allow ourselves to try new things. So I'm really thankful for this. So you mentioned the challenge by Lego Creatives. You've been uh, part of this challenge that uh, it was a challenging challenge, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, it was your first one. Um, it was all about working on the design of a document using visuals and using new tools as well. Uh, we used yeah. Miro a lot. Maybe you want to say a little bit about your experience of the challenge. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to share the screen as well uh, to share uh, the sure. board we have created, if this could be useful. If, yeah, indeed. I mean, if you can, um, if you can wait, before you, you share the uh, template, actually, I wanted to share very quickly um, terms and conditions I, would look, I was looking for generally to um exactly i don't know if you can see yes here they are here they are yeah so this is one of the examples uh, i redacted some references but um i was checking around terms and conditions in the commercial construction sector uh this is one of the example um personally uh i'm reviewing this and other type of documents like this on a daily basis and when the character is so uh, narrow and little. I struggle a lot, and it's always um, it's always difficult to understand the real meaning of it. Um, if you want to check as well uh, the other two template, we're going to find something pretty much similar. Again, black and white uh, with again linear, and in this case, not even uh, capital letters or numbers so just a list of information and even more complicated documents of 32 pages as a terms and conditions so this was my starting point as template and then as you rightly said i tried to apply uh the legal design principles so here we are now we can move to the ultimate challenge mirror board yes let's take a look together and um we have also sunashi who's live Welcome, Sunashi, to the live. So great to have you. Let's take a look at the mirror board that was created for the challenge to really help, um, well, to help uh, participants uh, learn this amazing tool that is called Miro, that is a tool uh, for design, innovation, uh, product design. Um, and so, Let's take a look at Marco's board. So Marco, you have a working space, I think on the right here, we have Sunashi's yeah, board here. There. Marco, there yeah. you are. So yeah. this is your working station. So we got to start uh, with the, the Canva and I'll let you speak and I'll just scroll down as, as, you, as you share about your experience and, and, and what you've learned and you know, whatever you want to share, yeah. this is your space to share. I'm more than happy to, more than happy to. Uh, so this was the, initial page uh, and so the initial stage of the of the challenge uh, very exciting because you are approaching uh, something you've never 
uh, seen before. Um, so on what was useful, we needed to start with some essential information on what uh, you're looking for in your document, your main brand, your principles uh, to uh, for, for which specific uh, sector you're trying to draft um, and what type of document. In my case, I've chosen a, a T and C. Um, some other uh, team members have chosen agreements or uh, different sort of examples. Uh, the second uh, model template was actually, um, I think, the funniest. Because I was I was simulating somehow a persona, so a typical user or a typical reader of my uh, of my T's and C's, and so I was trying to analyze the um, essential um, information, the essential characteristic of that um, persona to ensure that I was able to to deliver empathy, information, and um, references that a specific um, engineer, for example, a construction engineer or a designer was looking for in that uh, specific uh, document. Uh, yeah, I think this was mostly a teaching session, isn't it, Tessa? This yeah, was that was a teaching a... portion on uh, information architecture, absolutely. Yeah. And then and, we got into yeah. the most uh, and, most challenging yes. portion of the challenge, right? This is challenging. It took me, uh, I appreciate it from outside you might say, I would say that, uh, oh, well, this is fancy, it's going to take half an hour. And so it was funny when I saw at the top right 30 minutes, it was so funny. I mean, I've multiplied that. I think we need that, to change this. <laughs> I said, yeah, 30 minutes. Uh, it took me a month. I mean, of course, if you want to do it properly, right? So I spent so much time on this to ensure that the questions were, you know, um, appropriate. Uh, so that was somehow in the, uh, to integrate. And in the end, uh, I w I'm curious to know, uh, was it useful for you to use the this tool and was, was it useful for you as well to, because this yeah. part is all about, this part was all about breaking, breaking down the design process for legal docs and uh, moving away from word and this linear kind of thinking. So it was designed to kind of uh, uh, prepare the agreement uh, by using categories and different sections instead of just this linear, very traditional approach. Uh, how was it for you in the end? Was it useful to do this? It was definitely useful because this is the structure, this is the backbone of your final document. So the, the effort here is um, well paid. Uh, so because I this is, I would say the common core. So if you spend much more time on that, your document is going to be legal design. Otherwise, as we most of the time said, there's just a risk of doing pure design without structure behind it. Uh, but then according to legal design structure, you need to follow certain, certain, certain golden rules, which is not, I have to say, it's not a way of being rigid in any ways, but we need to follow a path, let's say. Um, this this section was more like uh, some prototype templates of how I could imagine my T's and C's on a website. Is that correct, Tessa? On a website page? Um, yeah, absolutely, and... absolutely. So this is when we start visualizing. So uh, lots of work before the visuals uh, get produced. Lots of thinking about uh, who's the user. Lots of empathy, understanding the problems, the pain points, yeah. uh, starting to prepare uh, all of the different uh, pieces of information. And then uh, that, that was about starting to create those visuals, starting to create the layout, um, and, and starting okay. to create those visuals, those roadmaps, uh, those yeah. dashboards. And uh, that was all about prototyping. Uh, different yeah. visual elements uh, to make sure that um, well to make sure that you have some thing to get started you don't have a blank you know don't have a blank page you have something to get started and um, and I think this this is the final the prototype itself. you got yeah, right I think. Final, yeah. cool. Indeed. so so what we have done uh, with this prototype again it's not a finished uh, it's not the last version, uh, so it's still a prototype, but 
um, in simple words, I, I needed to mix up all together uh, all the previous sections uh, within a context uh, in a proposed uh, formula. Um, and, um, and in here, let me stress this point, uh, it's about a language. Uh, so the use of plain language, um, essential information, and uh, as uh, any lawyer uh, will definitely confirm this, uh, words are extremely important, especially in contracts. And in general, there's always a tendency to add one more word or to be sure that there's no room for misunderstanding. So I remember when I'm drafting or reviewing contracts, the classical addition like uh, for avoidance of doubts or any sort of like additional sections that helps you to um, to understand the meaning. In here, you need to focus on where you find the information in the right spot, essential words, um, um, and let me say there's a bit of geography or mapping within the document itself uh, without forgetting the importance of colors. Colors are extremely important as well. Um, so yeah, if you if you scroll, uh, this was the beginning, the introduction of uh, the terms, the terms and conditions. So I was trying to flag uh, what's the mission of the company. Uh, it's an it's it's a made up company. So tree house constructions um, doesn't exist. It's my own right, uh, unless I'm gonna. Uh, gets you tomorrow by the real company, but I don't think so. And uh, if you go on the left, indeed, so these are the old sections. So I try to separate uh, each section by uh, five main ones between services, payment, insurance. So all the essential sections that you usually find uh, in our terms and conditions for um, provision of services, especially in the construction sector. So I try to make it as much as possible short, familiar, essential in understanding uh, in terms of language and something I absolutely uh, want to stress out is the importance of definitions. Um, so far in my studies and professional practice, I think definitions are the uh, definitely uh, the, the, one of the essentials, because uh, especially with contract reviews, you need to ensure that definitions are appropriate um, and they stick to uh, the statute or case law. It's very important to have the right uh, definition and supporting information on the definition. And I think it's always something that is missed in, uh, in T's and C's. Uh, they are included. But I, uh, from my uh, from my experience with practice, at least especially with clients, I mean lawyers are definitely uh, very picky with the definitions. But clients never pay attention to uh, usually to definitions, and often that's the most uh, typical question when they try to reach you out for oh what what that yeah. means in in normal terms. That's the classic. Or not in legal terms or oh, well well that's legal. Yeah. it's a bit difficult but so i think that a supporting definition close to the t's and c's um can be useful both for lawyers just to double check what you are somehow providing and especially for clients because we need to take in consideration that most of the clients even i don't know engineers or architects are not fully aware may not be fully aware of legal terms um that's why supporting definition uh, are always, I think, important um, in any T's and C's or in any agreement. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, I think um, I think you have uh, done such a good job at, uh, you know, uh, making the effort to create a new layout for this document, uh, providing the definitions in plain language, and uh, creating uh, visuals that would clarify some complex um, complex um, sections, inclu including uh, this, I think is really has a lot of potential uh, because we try to explain in uh, in words 
in a very linear way when we when we see traditional contracts and it's really difficult to understand uh, especially engineers um, when you think of uh, this prototype has been built thinking of a construction company as a as a mock case as a as a way to practice and when you think of construction companies most people are engineers uh, they're more used to see graphics than words uh, they're more used to see roadmaps than paragraphs uh, they're more used to see visuals uh, and and categories uh, than you know blocks of text so i think you've done such a fantastic job at you know, well, forcing you yourself to create uh, visuals that would make the experience of reading and understanding the document uh, so much better, taking into account uh, the user in this case, which would most likely be engineers. And so um, I, I don't know if you got time to test this document, uh, but I'm pretty sure if, if, you, if you have oh, the time to I, test it, the, of course. Uh, did you did you get to, to test it or, or you didn't have I, time? I've I've asked I have asked to a couple of friends. Um, I haven't got a full test yet, uh, and of course we we learn in the in the academy experience also the importance of um, the user feedback experience and um, actually a series of questions uh, that may sound obvious but actually are not. And as we said multiple times, feedback is essential in any sector but in legal design even more because you need to take into consideration different people's perspective um i haven't got any a good uh let's say review user experience yet but i will definitely ask for it as a p in the next few days because uh, as you rightly said before this is a prototype it's not a final product um i can definitely see that there's a lot to improve especially with the use of colors and the use of the graphics, uh, uh, I, that prototype needs to evolve, but it's my first good attempt. So um, I'm excited about it and I, I'm absolutely uh, uh, willing to know what uh, my uh, colleagues and anyone interested uh, think about it in a very constructive way. I'm very open to feedback, so be cruel <laughs> so I can, I can learn more. Well, so far, the feedback has been really good in the chat. We have Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Great to see you on the live. She says, great job. Congrats. Joseph is also saying congrats. Tsunashi, uh, sending some claps. Rudolf as well and Cecilia. Great feedback. Um, I really love it. I think uh, it has a huge potential, especially to use some of the visuals and start to integrate them more into you know the what we would be used to see in a document you know to start infusing some of those visuals in documents to create a, a better experience i have a question for you marco and as i'm asking sure. the question i would like to invite the audience to ask uh, your question so you know if any of you has a question for marco uh, you know, this is the opportunity, especially if you are live, but also if you watch the replay, you can uh, leave your question there. What I'm curious to know, Marco, is throughout this challenge, uh, so you got to apply the methodology, you got to challenge yourself to practice. Um, what is one thing you learned and one lesson you may want to give to the audience, uh, to those of, to those of uh, us who may be interested to to do this more? Sure. Uh, well, uh, I give you three answers. <laughs> the first is um, challenge yourself uh, and go out of your comfort zone uh, and test something new. That's actually what I've done here with legal design and legal creatives. First of all, of course, you find um, a topic you're interested in. Uh, but if you want to combine creativity and having fun with law, it's possible, uh, especially out of the black and white. Uh, and it has taken me many, many years to understand it. So I hope you get you get it quicker than me. Uh, and first point. Uh, second, um, if you're looking for an environment where uh, good feedback and honest feedback is always shared between the peers and the team members, this is one of the right environments you can join in law because um, I've worked uh, in legal in 
uh, two different jurisdictions, even three now. Uh, so I, I have a I have a taste of what the uh, legal sector looks like, at least in Europe, and um, with up and downs for everyone. What I've noticed from lawyers is that no one wants to be wants to get feedback. So there's also somehow a very lawyers are very proud of their work and their skills, and they rarely want to get evaluated or judged. Or uh, and that's where the subject somehow comes to an end because if you're not challenged and if you don't get a good feedback well there's no growth uh, so this is my second good point about the experience and lastly uh, well uh, well you can challenge yourself with the use of good IT tools Miro as an uh, as, a, as a platform has a huge potential I think um, it's a massive growing company but since I've I've, I've started to use Miro of I'm on it uh, a lot for any sort of projects or draft I'm using um, and I'm introducing that to uh, to work as well and they're quite quite excited it's just a matter of trust and pushing a bit for the you know the digitalization of uh, some processes so yeah I think these are the three main things I come up with but let, let me finish uh, there's a great sense of community so yeah, on top of it, so you get support. I see Alejandra is saying your empathy map was great to identify the best way to rethink that document. Thank oh, you so thank much, you. Alejandra, for commenting. This is so nice of you to say. And uh, if you have uh, additional comments or questions to ask uh, to Marco, that would be fantastic to ask now. Because I think what you have said, again, is really important. Uh, this uh, feedback uh, loop is essential in the methodology and uh, really daunting in the real life. Uh, whether we lawyers or not lawyers, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a little, a little difficult to ask for feedback because um well sometimes we we are a bit afraid of what we're gonna get right in terms of feedback um but but that's the only way to improve um i mean all, you, you, without asking for feedback we can second guess what what people would expect from us or want from us but the best way is just to ask them and it's a great way to build a better relationship as well with our customers with our users and to really make sure that whatever we do is going to deliver some more value to them. And, and sometimes the value can be real. Sometimes it can be perceived. I think uh, people underestimate the value of perceived value. Sometimes it's just reorganizing the information, making it better, easier. It's not too much work for us, but it can make such a huge difference for the user. And so I think this is, this is something that is very important. So I want to thank you for bringing this. And uh, Marco, I'm curious to know, now that you have uh, completed this first uh, challenge, uh, that you got to challenge yourself to practice, uh, what's your next step? And, um, and how can we help you as well? Sure. Uh, next step, definitely asking for uh, user experience feedback. I really, really need it. Because uh, right now, after two, three months, um, I have read as much as I could. I've seen others jobs and so I've, I've i've reached somehow my my plateau level i need help from 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 others uh, with feedback so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna focus on sending uh, this prototype to some friends or to some professionals and asking for uh, honest feedback on it so once i collect everything i can uh, uh, you know think about uh, all the messages and then understand where i can improve um, this is my step one, and let's say in the medium term, I'm going to definitely, once this has been completed, I'm going to draft something soon just to stay in the loop because I want to ensure that um, I keep absorbing it. And who knows, in the long term, I hope to uh, deliver this professionally uh, sometime soon. So, yeah, that's the idea. And this is great. So you're going to test this document. If there's anyone who's watching who wants to get to test this document with Marco, I would highly encourage you to connect with Marco because it's such a great way to learn, to actually be a, a user and to do a test. 
So that leads me to my next question. What is the best way to connect with you, Marco? Oh, sure. Uh, well, um, I have a LinkedIn fan, as you right now. So um, you can definitely uh, find me on LinkedIn. Um, so uh, I think I've shared a screen directly with you, Tessa. Yeah, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Um, just send me a message uh, or or just contact me and happy to connect or directly by email. Uh, oh. This is my email uh, on Gmail and I'm happy to, to, to answer to your questions if you want to connect, if you have anything uh, useful or you want just to have a chat, I'm always there. This is so fantastic. You found a user. Uh, Joseph is volunteering for a user test. Very good, I have one. Who else is volunteering <laughs> for a user test? Uh, this is your chance. Are you going to learn so much from doing the test? And uh, it's such a great way to connect with, you know, amazing professionals like Marco, who are so dedicated to learn and to do this professionally. So it's a great way to build a community around this uh, great projects you have done here, Marco. Um, Thank you very much. Before we go, we already 45 minutes. Well, we started a bit late, so we're actually 36 minutes into the, the live. I see Rudolf is also volunteering for a user test. Thank you so much, Rudolf, for volunteering. Um, there's two things I want to do before we go. Um, sure. There's a little video I want to show you all. That I think you're going to really, really, I hope, I hope you're going to be impressed. Um, we just found out a way to... Uh, just explore new virtual reality at Lego Craze, and we want to show you this little video and invite you for this event that is coming up on Saturday. But before, I want to give Marco another opportunity. Uh, do you want to stay and we can chat more? Do you want to do you want, oh, sure. do you want to see something? And I, I would really love to 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 show this video. Can I? Please, please do it. Please do it. Let's yes. go and take a look at this quick video. Make sure to stay because this is a little sneak peek of what's going to happen on Saturday. This Saturday, we are hosting a virtual Lego design gallery. We have done those gallery events for more than 14 months. I think this is the fifth edition. And with all of this uh, buzz around the metaverse, we said we have to do the art gallery on the metaverse. We cannot just let the NFT people have all of the fun. So we got to work on something, and we want to show you a little, a little sneak peek of uh, the event for this Saturday. Let's take a look together. Hi, and welcome to the Legal Design Art Gallery. I would love to show you around this beautiful space we have created for you in the metaverse. But before I do, let me introduce myself. I'm Tessa Manuelo, the founder and the CEO of Legal Creatives, and I'm really excited to show you around this beautiful space. This space is designed for the upcoming art gallery, and I'd love for you to follow me to see a little bit what we have created for you. We have created an amazing space where you can interact with each other and get to discover amazing projects that have been created by Academy members. The Lego Creatives platform is all about helping you think a little bit more creatively about the law. And so we are super excited to show you the results of what's possible when we use this methodology. This space is really easy to use. You don't need an Oculus Glass to actually enjoy this space. You can just use your regular desktop, laptop, or even mobile and put your camera on. And this is it. This is all you need to know to interact in the space. What you need to know is how to join the space. And here's how. At Lego Creatives, we have created a VIP experience. For those of you who would like to network and interact in this beautiful space we have created for you. Take your VIP ticket and get to enjoy this beautiful, amazing space we have created for you. And this is it. For any questions, feel free to ask us. We're here to help. It's always a pleasure. And I can't wait to see you at the event. Thank you once again for being here. And let's get creative. So what do you think, Marco? Absolutely outstanding. I mean, it's impressive. I don't know how you make it in such a short time. I don't know. I mean, this is the <laughs> Well, you know, that's the that's what happens when you're passionate about something. Everything is possible. That's what I've learned yeah, in my indeed. life with creativity. Indeed, indeed. 
<laughs> I would encourage the audience to come and uh, for the event this Saturday. So you can come in the metaverse as a VIP. Uh, here's the link for you to join. Uh, if you don't, if if you're a little bit afraid of the metaverse, you can still join the live stream experience. Uh, but I think the, the metaverse experience is is such a ton of fun. Like we we've been exploring the metaverse for actually, I actually we've been exploring it for more than a year now. We started with another tool. I think Marco, you have used it. It looked like a, a game, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that the the space? Uh, shuttle yeah, it was or, the gather yeah. town space we yeah. have used and uh, we had so much fun and now we are using this uh, enhanced experience so i think it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to interact in this metaverse and i believe this brings a lot of uh, this brings a lot of uh, new opportunities as well for for legal professionals um whether we want to be able to interact in this metaverse virtual reality or uh, whether we want to be part of uh, you know this new movement that brings so many legal issues as well. I see Bruno says amazing. I hope you're going to be with us. Uh, Vanessa, I think is volunteering as well for uh, user wow. tech, and Alejandra as well is volunteering here. This is so amazing. Thank you. Um, guys. We have a LinkedIn user. I have to check who is this LinkedIn user. I don't know why it's anonymous. I'm going to check here on the live uh, who wants to be a part of this too. So the best way for you to be a, uh, to be a volunteer is make sure to connect with Marco. And uh, I think here we have Jose, Jose Ramon who says he wants to be a volunteer. So I think um, the best way to do this is Marco. You can connect with all those uh, great amazing volunteers in the chat after the the live uh, or you can also connect with marco great so anything else that we want to say today before we go i want to thank marco i want to thank you so much for sharing today uh for taking the time to do this challenge to come here to the live to share and to uh get to you know uh, show what's possible when we think a little differently and when we use the tools a little differently. And I, I think this prototype has a lot of potential. It was your first iteration. And so I think the second and the third is going to be even better. And so uh, let us know how it goes with those user tests and feel free to come back uh, with all those user testers that are volunteering here for, uh, for you. So, so this is really great. This is really great. Thank and, you very um, much, Chris. Oh, this is amazing. And make sure to join uh, on Saturday for the event, whether you want to be a VIP in the metaverse. Um, we have a discount for our members. We're charging a small fee. It's not a lot, but just a small fee because we want to make sure you're going to be there because the metaverse, the space we have created, is limited in space. So we want to make sure that you're going to be there. So there's a small fee, uh, but you have a discount if you're members. And uh, you can even join for free using the live stream. You won't be in the metaverse, but it will still be an amazing experience for you to be able to see even more design work, such as the one you have seen from, uh, from Marco today. And it's happening this Saturday. We're starting at 9 a.m. Americas, which is going to be, I think, 8 a.m. for Mexico, uh, 9 a.m. New York. It's going to be 2 p.m. in London, 3 p.m. in yeah. Paris. It's a fun event, so I really hope you're going to be there uh, with me in the metaverse, and uh, we're going to really you're going to make your entry in this virtual reality, and uh, we've made it easy for you. All right, everybody, Marco, one last words before we go. I just want to thank you for the opportunity. I want to thank my uh, my team members of the academy as well for the support. Um, I'm going to name a few, I'm going to miss a few, but uh, thanks everyone for your support from Cecilia, Joseph, Helene, the other day as well. Um, everyone, Vanessa, uh, uh, you're amazing. Thanks for, for the help uh, on a day to day. And again, if you have any questions, guys, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, and so contact me and here we go. Um, I see you in the metaverse as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look uh, at the metaverse opportunities. Thank you once again. 
It will, I had so much fun today and uh, thank you. It's been great. Thank you, Tessa. Well, uh, let's continue on this journey and uh, let's make sure you're going to be there for this event. So I'm going to play this video before we go about this ultimate challenge that Marco got to do with us. And you're going to see even more examples this Saturday at the event. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Marco.